Welcome, everyone. I'm Leandra Letterman. I'm the William W. Oliver Professor of Tax Law at Indiana University, Maurer School of Law. And it's my pleasure to co-host this series with Dr. Leopoldo Parada. And so let me turn it over to him to introduce himself and today's speaker. Thank you, Leandra. I'm uh, Dr. Leopoldo Parada, a lecturer in tax law at the University of Leeds here in the UK. And uh, for today, we have a fantastic speaker and also a very, very interesting paper to discuss. Uh, with us today, we have Dr. Afton Titus, who is an associate professor in law at, uh, at the law faculty of the University of Cape Town. Dr. Titus completed her PhD at the University of Amsterdam Tax Center, in which she designed a corporate income tax system for the East African communities, proposed federation, and also how to protect it. She is expert in analyzing the tax implication of the East African communities' regional integration agenda. This expertise has led to her inclusion in the team of legal experts selected to advise the EAC Partners Estate on the tax policies. Dr. Titus has also provided input to the Dutch Parliament on its tax treaty policy regarding matters on African developing countries. Dr. Titus is an admitted attorney, notary, and conveyancer. She practiced as a tax practitioner at a big South African law firm for a few years before joining the University of Cape Town. She's also a member of the South African chapter of the International Fiscal Association and the Young IFA Network. Today, Dr. Titus presents tax policy for the future of developing countries, the synergies between COVID-19 and automation. Dr. Titus Afton, thank you very much. And now the floor is entirely yours. Thank you so much to Leandra and Leopoldo for this wonderful opportunity. So my presentation today is about the synergies that I see uh, between the tax policies designed to minimize the economic effect that comes about because of the global pandemic and the tax policies that could be used to encourage automation and the widespread use of automation in business. Now, this paper has come about because I do have an interest in um, advancing technologies and I must admit that this interest is fueled by the fact that I am an avid Back to the Future fan. So you can just imagine my disappointment when 2015 came and went and we still do not have a commercially viable flying car. I would be the first person in line to get my driver's slash pilot's license. And so while I don't have my own hoverboard yet, I do like to keep track of technology and how it is able to help people at the moment. So I am then happy to share my screen with you as I take you through my journey, as I've been able to integrate my two interests, and that is about advancing technologies and tax policy. So the first question is, why should automation be encouraged in Africa? Automation holds such incredible promise to improve the lives of ordinary Africans. And innovative things are happening on the continent as we speak. For example, there's currently a trial being undertaken in South Africa where mobile robots are being used in vineyards so these robots would travel down the lanes in the vineyard. And while they do that, they would be inspecting and monitoring the produce growth. This information would then be transferred to the farmer who would use this data in the early detection of abnormalities or even potential hazards. And this is significant because all of this is happening at a stage where the farmer is able to intervene and in so doing, potentially increase the harvest yield. Automation is also a very important in terms of the manufacturing sector in Africa. This sector has seen rapid growth for many years 
And even now during the pandemic, it's been a slower growth, but a growth nonetheless. It's an important aspect from an African perspective because this is the sector that has the potential to absorb the mass influx of young Africans coming onto the job market as they come of age. Automation also has great potential in the health sector. So at the moment, medical supplies are being transported to remote areas in Rwanda via drones. Prosthetic limbs are being printed in Kenya and Uganda. And some African countries with respect to the energy sector are using large solar powered farms in order to power communities. So despite the optimism of all of these accounts, a great deal has been written about the dark side of automation, about the dangers of widespread automation in business. Now, when you look at this literature in more detail, it becomes apparent that this is really just fears. It is speculations by commentators about what the negative implications could be if we were to adopt widespread automation. Now these fears could be categorized into three general themes. First, that there's going to be mass unemployment as the robots come in and they take over all of the jobs that every human has ever done. Second, that Africa as a continent is going to be left behind because Africans don't have the skills to succeed in a fully automated world. And thirdly, that we are all going to be assailed by an increasing number of cyber threats and cyber attacks as more information is shared online and as online systems become more integrated. Now, at this stage, you must be thinking to yourself, self, why do these fears sound so familiar? And that's because they are. These fears have all come to realistic, stark reality through the global pandemic. And as the world grapples with trying to deal with all of the implications of this, so mass unemployment has already been widely reported in several countries, as is the case with this newspaper report that was published in April 2020. And as far as Africa concerns, um, Africa is being left behind in the vaccine race, as developed countries are able to stockpile vaccines, while African countries are struggling to supply vaccines for their people. And not surprisingly, as health um, sectors are being overwhelmed again and again as the pandemic progresses, people also have to face increasing cyber attacks over this trying period. So this made me realize that if COVID-19 is bringing to life all of the fears around automation, then surely all of the economic and extraordinary measures that we are currently using to, strive, to try to stem the flow of the virus, that these could in fact maybe be amended and used to transition African economies towards, a, towards the wider use of automation in business. So how do I imagine that COVID-19 tax policies could become automation tax policies? So to begin with, I note that all countries have been largely uniform in their immediate response to the pandemic. So countries have decided to extend filing deadlines 
Some countries have decided to um, extend payment deadlines and some countries have decided to defer or even waive tax liabilities altogether. Now this kind of flexibility would be invaluable in an automation tax policy context. So if you have an employee who happens to find themselves between jobs as they are trying to upskill themselves, this kind of flexibility to just give them a tiny break from their tax burden would be extremely useful as they make this kind of transition in the workplace. Also, I've noted that COVID tax policies like increased capital allowances, accelerated depreciation rates, measures to reduce the tax barriers to the import of medical equipment through the waiver of duties and levies, that all of these would go a long way towards encouraging the purchase and the import of machinery and technology into developing countries and so as to encourage automation more generally in their business operations. I've also noticed that the current COVID tax policies that are being implemented at the moment to try to reduce uncertainties about the application of complex concepts like changing company tax residencies or creating a permanent establishment during global lockdowns, that all of these would be incredibly welcome in an automated driven world where businesses are then able to minimize their physical presence in a particular jurisdiction, even as they are able to increase their market share in that particular country. Now, let's get to the practicalities of how an African country could move towards greater automation in business operations. Let's start by talking about the government spending aspect of this. Now, to my mind, it would make sense for governments to implement some sort of wage subsidy. So the point of this would be to encourage employers to upskill their employees so that they could undertake more creative and innovative tasks. So these are tasks that the machines are not yet able to do. And then my view is that African countries should support the manufacturing sector because it has great opportunities for employment, even as more automation is introduced into the sector itself. In my paper, I also encourage African countries to invest in education, to spend more on infrastructure relating to education and to support teachers. Now, this call for African countries to invest more in education is not new. What is new is that the return in Africa is beginning to show. So in my paper, I do mention a few examples and I will only mention one here. For example, in Africa, the representation of women in the engineering field happens to be the highest in many of the regions in the world. Now, at this point, you must be thinking, Afton, this is really fascinating. But how on earth is this spending going to be financed? Now here, I have drawn inspiration from the COVID tax policies, this time from the long-term tax policies that are currently in discussion about how it is that governments are to support economies in making their recovery through this pandemic. So first, I suggest that African countries implement a solidarity tax in an automation context. Now, how is this to work? 
So my idea here is that a solidarity tax would be implemented on a temporary once off basis and that this would be imposed on companies who have already been successful in bringing automation into their business. And then this money would be used to subsidize those, business, those businesses who have not been as successful. So those businesses would then be able to increase their use of automation through this particular tax. Now, it is in the nature of a solidarity tax that it should not be overused. And this is particularly true in an automation context, because if the solidarity tax were to be used too often, it would have a cooling effect on people's um, inclination to, to actually using automation. So in this respect, um, if you use it too much, it's a bad idea. Then, Wealth taxes are currently being considered by countries as they uh, evaluate how economies are going to recover. Now, in an African context, most African countries have a tax on the transfer of wealth, not necessarily on the accumulation of wealth as such. Having said that, Algeria does have a wealth tax in place. So African countries could use this as an example by which to evaluate the performance of the tax, how to perhaps amend the tax for their own purposes, and then to decide in using all of the available information if this is the type of thing that would work in their context. Now, I like the idea of a wealth tax in an automation context, because it has the potential to raise revenue while also not having a deterring effect on innovation or on the drive to use automation in businesses in general. My next recommendation is that African countries consider using environmental taxes more widely in order to raise revenue. Now, the use of environmental taxes also has the added benefit of creating behavior that is beneficial to the environment. So South Africa has recently introduced a carbon emissions tax and that was in 2019. So this then also represents an opportunity for African countries to consider how this tax is performed there and also to consider how to amend it if they consider that it's appropriate for their particular context. And then finally, I have suggested that African countries consider the introduction of a windfall profits tax in an automation context. So a tax like this could be uh, implemented on companies who have been successful in bringing in automation into their business operations and through that have been able to increase their productivity levels and obviously also their profitability. Now a windfall profits tax like this could be imposed as I said in those circumstances but it could perhaps also be imposed because of the nature of the industry itself in that it is able to generate a large amount of profit. I say this because the Democratic Republic of Congo currently imposes a super profits tax of 50% on the profits generated by mining companies. I like this idea of possibly introducing a um, windfall profits tax into an African context because some African countries have used this historically, um, especially during war times. So, for example, South Africa introduced an excess profits tax, both during World War I and World War II. And the purpose of this tax was to tax the extraordinary profits made by the manufacturers of weaponry. So this idea of a windfall profits tax or an excess profits tax, I think has potential to work well in an African context, 
because some African countries already have the legislation related to this on their books, and they could then amend it to suit an automation process. And in theory, a tax like this should be easier to administer because the countries are already familiar with the concept itself. So in conclusion, I would like to say that while COVID-19 has brought about immense suffering and incredible economic strife, it has also shown us how resilient governments can be to turn a bad situation around. And it is in this view that I am suggesting that perhaps the catastrophe that COVID-19 is could well represent an opportunity for us to learn some lessons that would enable us to build a better future for tomorrow. Thank you very much. That is the end of my presentation.